There we go. All right, so over the past four days, you guys figured this out. You figured out your own rules. The problem is you don't really know a lot of the terminology. I mean, if I draw a compound on here, pretty much everybody can name it. All right, if I draw this guy on there, even if I draw him in a confusing way, which I will do in a minute, you could all, I would hope, name that guy. You just took the test. What do you think that guy's probably called? 2-methyl-butane. That's nice. But did you know it was, um, first of all, the type of compound it is, it's a hydrocarbon. And it's an aliphatic hydrocarbon. And it's, an un, it's, a, it's a saturated hydrocarbon. And that it's, um, uh, what else there is there? Well, I think maybe that's what. Anyway, there are all the terms. You've never heard, there's different homologous theories I'm going to talk about and different terms about these things. And you say to yourself, if you went off to college at this point, well, I didn't know that. I never learned that. But you did. You just didn't know that's what it were called. All right, now that's why I've got to go over these, this terminology today of what you have been doing. You know how to do it now. You, people in college are going to wish they had that skill when you go off to college. They, they all had no organic at all. And they're going to wish they had that skill. Uh, and you're going to have that skill. You're going to already know how to name these things. And by the way, we're obviously not done naming. We're going to use it the rest of the year. All right, so let's just learn some of the terminology about what these things are called. All right, so this unit, this whole chapter is going to be on, and have notes there in front of you, nomenclature. And I, what's the, what's the fa nomenclature a fancy name for? Naming. Naming, naming system, right? Okay. Uh, nomenclature is just a fancy, I can use nomenclature for anything, not just for chemistry, not just for organic. Nomenclature is just a, a way to name something. And isomers, I'll talk about those when we get to them. All right, number one, hydrocarbons. That's what you've been basically working with for the past four days. All right, they contain carbon and hydrogen. By the way, our hydrocarbons are not carbohydrates. What do you think is the difference between a carbohydrate and a hydrocarbon? Think about it. Think about the word. Try to put two and two together. You're going to have a thing like this on the AP exam as well, people. Even if I haven't said it, you know, you're going to have to be able to figure it out. What do you think the difference is carbohydrate and a hydrocarbon? Carbohydrates have water. Exactly. It's actually the ratio of water is pretty much the same to carbon, car CH2O. That's what your carbohydrates are basically going to be. Things like um, that are made up of sugar molecules linked together generally. All right? So they have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in them as well. All right, well, these guys have generally just carbon hydrogen. Are we going to get to guys that have oxygen and other elements in them? Yeah. You've already gotten a little hint of that when I put some of the halogens in there, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. But other than that, they're pretty much all carbon and hydrogen. Now, there are two types of hydrocarbons. These are the names that you have been naming for a while but didn't know this. All right, you have saturated hydrocarbons. Okay? Saturated hydrocarbons contain all single bonds. And they're called saturated because they're saturated with as much hydrogen as you possibly can. You've heard this word before. Where have you heard saturated and unsaturated, obviously, the other word? Where have you heard that before? With what? Yeah, with food. What particular things are saturated or unsaturated? Fats. Saturated and unsaturated and trans fatty acids. All, right? All these things you've heard about before. And yes, we're going to talk about that. It's one of the other little um, uh, things like I do with global warming, I'll do a little thing with that. I'll talk about, um, uh, some, you know, give you some links to real life, stuff you've heard of. How scared should you be? And this is another one of those cases. Remember I told you when I grew up, going to elementary school, I can remember reading my weekly readers about the next ice age was coming. Well, this is another example. When I grew up, I was told the worst thing you could eat is butter. And everybody's eating margarine. All right? Everybody's eating margarine um, because it's got less... Uh, it's got less saturated fats. All right, we'll talk about what they mean. We'll talk about unsaturated fats. By the way, what's happened since then? What have we learned about uh, the unsaturated fats, like stuff that's in margarine and uh, certain kinds of oils? They have trans fats in them. And now we say, nope, oh, that's the worst thing you can eat. Go back to eating butter. All right? So it's, it's just funny how uh, things all turn around you know, and come full circle. All right? I think, for the most part, when you, when you read all of these things together, you realize that pretty much anything in moderation isn't going to kill you. Except poison. But even that, in moderation, might kill you. I might not kill you. Um, there are things that are poisonous in higher doses, a lot of them, that are, are not poisonous and actually may be good for you. Like, for example, alcohol is a poison. But if I have a glass of red wine every night, some, people, some studies show that it's good for you. you, you just, it's just one of those things where you, you kind of get a little scared about stuff that you should. 
All right, so we'll talk about saturated and unsaturated fats, but here's the key. What makes it, as far as chemistry is concerned, why is this guy... Oops, that's bad. Whoa, this is being goofy again. Why is this guy saturated, considered saturated? All right, but this guy is not. Well, it's pretty obvious, right? When I'm talking about saturation, what am I talking about saturation with? Not bonds. Hydrogens, yeah. If I have a double bond in here, I can't, I told you this, you know, we saw this when we were doing our things. You can't just throw H's all around there. You can only have a total of a maximum of four things bound to a carbon. He's only got one, two, three, four, five, six H's bound around it, even though there's, and there's, and there's three carbons. This guy's got three carbons, but he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hydrogens around him. So he's saturated. I can't put any more H's on him. That's why I call him saturated. As opposed to unsaturated ones. Well, by the way, that's what I'm going to I said. As opposed to unsaturated carbons. Which contain one or more double or triple bonds. Because... If you do have a double or triple bond, you can't have as many H's around them as you could fit. Okay. So that's one way I can classify these guys. But there's other terms that you guys don't know about yet that I'm going to call these compounds all right, as we go along. And I'm going to get to a chart, which I won't finish today since we don't have time. And I know, like I said, we have a little bit more time in this class. I'll be even shorter on time than the other one. And those are different homologous series that I'm going to list here. And I'm going to give you um, the little definition of it here, and I'll, I'll list for you to the side the four different ones I'm going to talk about. But what do you think of when you think of homologous series? Homo means same. Homologous series. There's going to be something that's the same about each of these things. A series of compounds with a similar structural feature. And they're going to differ from each other by a constant number of atoms. There's actually a formula you can come up with to tell whether it's any one of these different series. And I'm going to have you guys come up with that formula for me tomorrow in class. So if we look at this chart, the same chart you have there, it's not filled in, though. All right, if we look at this chart, we'll see. We are going to talk about the name of the series, which you already know how to draw and name. The suffix you already know. I'm going to go over, you're going to figure out the general formula and the structural feature of each of them. And these are the four we're going to have, and you can spread these out amongst your paper. We're going to talk about alkanes, alkanes, alkynes, and alkyl groups. Okay. And actually, we'll actually mention quickly the cycle alkanes as well. So if you can spread one, two, three, four, five of these guys out in that space provided there, tomorrow we will talk about what makes an alkane. What do you think is going to make an alkane? What's he going to have? What's his structural feature? Single bonds. Single bonds. Alkenes, you probably already know, are going to be double, alkynes, uh, triple. And the reason I give you these names, I have to put these into your notes, it would, uh, you know, so at, when you hear about these, when you see these in the future, you're not going to say, well, we never learned what an alkene was. Yes, you did. You actually drew them. You knew them. You named them. You did everything you had to do with them. You just didn't call them alkenes because you were busy doing all the naming stuff. Okay? We'll fill all these in tomorrow. Okay? And uh, um, we'll stop here. Do check your uh, Skyward, and I'll try to.